The Holy Gospel according to Luke has found in the second chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. Now every year, Jesus' parents went to Jerusalem for the festival of the Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up as usual for the festival. When the festival had, was ended and they started to return, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem, but his parents did not know it. Assuming that he was in the group of travelers, they went a day's journey. Then they started to look for him among their relatives and friends. When they did not find him, they returned to Jerusalem to search for him. After three days, they found him in the temple, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard him were amazed at his understanding and his answers. When his parents saw him, they were astonished. And his mother said to him, Child, why have you treated us like this? Look, your father and I have been searching for you in great anxiety. He said to them, Why were you searching for me? Did you not know that I must be in my father's house? But they did not understand what he said to them. Then he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was obedient to them. His mother treasured all these things in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom and in years and in divine and human favor. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Please be seated. Today's Gospel text is the only story we have about Jesus as a child. We have stories of his birth in two of the Gospels, but aside from these few verses in Luke, we hear nothing else about Jesus until he comes to be baptized by John. So what does this one story tell us? Now every year his parents went to Jerusalem for the festival of the Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up as usual for the festival. We know from these words that Jesus was raised in a family that participated fully in Jewish temple tradition. We also know that this year the trick would be different for Jesus because this year he was 12 years old. This is the first year that Jesus is required to go to the festival. 12 is the age when Jewish boys become men. And all Jewish men, at least the ones who were able-bodied enough to travel, were required to travel to Jerusalem for the Passover celebration. Jesus would also have a deeper level of participation this year. He would go with Joseph to the temple courtyard where the animals brought for sacrifice were slaughtered and watch as his family's offering was placed on the altar of burnt offerings. Despite these differences for the 12-year-old Jesus, the family most likely followed their usual pattern for these journeys. And when the festival was over, they started home with a group of other families who were going their way. Traveling in groups was common back then. The roads were dangerous. There were thieves and robbers and any number of wild animals that could cause trouble. Now, despite our 21st century thoughts on child care, it would not be uncommon that Mary and Joseph didn't know exactly where Jesus was in this crowd of travelers. They would have assumed he was off with the other boys his age, doing whatever 12-year-old boys did for fun and entertainment on a long journey. What was not common was his failure to return to the camp area that evening. How many 12-year-olds do you know who don't show up for supper? <laughs> now they were worried, and they began to search for him among the family and friends they were traveling with, and they didn't find him. So they did the only thing they could do. They started back towards Jerusalem. They had come a full day's journey, a long way to travel back when you're sick with worry about a child. What might have happened to him? He might have fallen along the way. Maybe he was lying on the road injured or worse, dead. What if he'd wandered away from the group and been attacked by a wild animal? When they finally made it back to Jerusalem, things didn't get any better. Where do you even begin to search for one child in a city that size? Logic might tell us to start at whatever lodging we had used while in the city, 
since the family would have camped, but since the family would have camped outside the city walls with other pilgrims, there wouldn't have been any place to go and check. There probably wasn't even a locally organized police department, at least not as we think of it, where they could go and report that their child was missing. For three days, they roamed the city looking for Jesus, and then, finally, they decided to go to the temple. The text doesn't say if they went there to look for him or to pray for his safety, but there he was, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. And what were their first words to him? Did they say, thank God you're all right? Did they ask, are you hungry? Have you eaten? Did they want to know, where have you been sleeping at night? No. Their first words were, why have you treated us like this? Mary and Joseph asked the same question that so many parents ask when children act irrationally. How could you do this to us? The anxiety, the outright fear that they have been feeling, feeling for three days gives way to anger. They were searching for a tired, frightened, hungry boy. What they found instead was a competent young adult sitting in the temple, listening to the teachers and exploring the scriptures. So it's no wonder when Mary asks, why have you treated us like this? She makes it sound sort of intentional. Now, I've heard this text many times, and I always remember the basics. It's Passover, they start for home, they go full day's journey, and then they search for three days. But what I haven't really noticed before is the boy Jesus stayed behind. Stayed behind. What does that mean? Other translations say he remained or tarried for a time. So I decided I had to look it up, and sure enough, the word implies intent. He actually did do it on purpose. Jesus was not separated from his travel group and lost in the crowd. He was not distracted in a 12-year-old moment and accidentally left behind. He made a choice to stay behind and he made a choice not to tell anyone. Mary was right to ask, why have you treated us like this? But Jesus answers her why with a why of his own. Why were you searching? Why didn't you know where to look for me in the first place, in my father's house? This question has led to centuries of theological debate over when Jesus knew who he was. When did he know that Joseph was not actually his father, but that the temple was his true father's house? Luke obviously believes that Jesus knew who he was at this point, but I prefer to read this answer through his humanity. Does he realize that he's different? Probably so. He may even have some understanding of how he is different. But this is a 12-year-old moment. He is full of bravado and the confidence of being a man. He is not full of honoring his parents, as instructed by the Torah, the very scriptures he has been studying during his three days in the temple. Now, I know that some find any human interpretation of Jesus' actions disturbing, even at age 12, but I find great comfort in it. Jesus is fully human as well as fully divine. This means that God knows and understands my humanity our Creator knows us, the created, not just in some academic way, like when we learn about life in school, and not just through the obvious power differences between God and us. No, here we see that God knows our frailty and our weaknesses because God shared our humanity. God was an infant, complete with colic, diapers, and rashes. God went through teething and the terrible twos. God had to discover what it meant to share and had to do chores and learn to obey his earthly parents. God knows us because God was one of us. When life is messy, when we make a mess of things, 
there is someone we can go to who understands what it means to be human. Someone who knows our every weakness because he lived with human weakness. This is the God who comes into our hearts to live. The same God who was and is and will be. God was a helpless infant and a typical rebellious 12-year-old. God knows us, comforts us, and loves us for who we really are. Amen.